today, I want to show you folks how to draw some herons and egrets. These guys are really fun because those incredible necks, um, it's, they're just, they are, are elegant. And, and today, today you're going to get kind of an under the hood appreciation of just a little bit of the, the subtlety, beauty, and wonder um, in those, 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 those necks. The, what's going on there st structurally in terms of bird architecture is going to blow your mind. And it's also going to help you knowing what's going on under the hood. It's going to help you be able to draw these things. So we're going to get started with just a little bit of, um, let's see here. Uh, we're going to uh, go to a, uh, a, 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 a few slides that will help me show you some interesting details. And here we are. All right. So um, we want to um, be able to, to, to draw these, these, these characters. We're going to start by taking a close look at the business end of the bird. And in that, Let me see here. Oops, wrong way. Here we go. So these are these are four heads of herons and egrets. And what I'd like you to do is just take a look across these this group. And that's a Goliath heron um, up there in the top left hand corner, top right, as if you're reading a book. We're going over to a cattle egret. Um, down to an immature reddish, uh, or to, over to a reddish egret down there with the, the blue around its, its eyes, and then over to a tricolored heron. And just looking at these, these four, what I want you to notice are the differences in the proportions of the size of the head and the, 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 the bill there. So if I am say looking at the, 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 the tricolored over here, right? If this is the mass of its head, right? Let's see, I'm gonna go out one head length, right? And what is that? Um, that is almost two thirds of another head length out there, right? Um, so you kind of go one and a third head length out. Let's compare that with over here, the cattle egret. Look at what's going on there with those bill proportions, right? So the, that's right, it's, it's only one head out. You throw another head on here and you're out at the tip of the beak. So um, the, the first thing that is, is that a, a, an egret or a heron, there's no sort of generic template for these things. Some, are proportionately really, really, really long built, like that tricolor down in the bottom right-hand corner. Um, uh, others, others to, to different degrees. Um, now let's also look at the depth of the bill. What I want you to do is sort of think of the bill as a box, right? And if I put that bill in a box, right? Um, actually, I'm going to change the, uh, uh, let's change the orientation of that box. Let's have that middle of the bill kind of go down the side there. All right. Let's take a look at that and compare it with the Goliath heron over here. And look at this, this, the, just this massive um, beak on the Goliath. And then over here on the tricolored, you've got this thing that is much more, much more of a slender bill. So how thick the bill is, there's not going to be, is, is going to be something where you want to take a look at your, at your bird itself. So um, 
by getting the thickness of your bill, the length of your bill, you're helping to kind of describe the species that's before you. And so this is just to say that there's not a generic bill proportions. These are, are places where right off the bat, when you're, you're looking at your bird, um, the proportions on herons and egrets are going to do a lot to make, instead of, to, to make one bird look like uh, one species and another look like another. All right, we'll just take these and put them off to the side and I'll help you get those all in there later on. Okay, that's no problem. All right, now um, let's add a bird in here. Oh, I am, now let's add a bird in here. There we go. Um, this is a great egret. And um, the reason that I have the great egret in here is that uh, for where I live, the great egret is a really common bird. And another thing that's nice about the great egret is that the great egret's bill is sort of somewhere in the middle. It's not as thick as we see over with the goliath. It's not as short as with the cattle egret. It's not as skinny as the tri. It's sort of a, it's sort of a nice generic, a nice generic point for a medium length uh, bill. And so I want to, if I get really comfortable with drawing the species that is the most common um, around me. Um, Hold on a second. If I um, have a, get uh, used to drawing the species that's the most common around me, then that's really going to help me kind of have a reference point um, for, for what I'm doing. So if, uh, if, if snowy egrets are the most common around you, then, and you're going to be drawing lots of snowy egrets, great. Um, but, but take some species that you're used to seeing, and that will become your benchmark for what is normal. So if, for you, the great egret looks normal, then you'll look at a tricolor and go like, oh, long skinny. Wow, that's really, really but you want to have some sort of a reference point. Before you have a reference point, everything looks kind of medium. Another thing that's useful to look at is on the tip of the bill, the spear shape of the tip of that bill. Are you looking at, um, are you looking at something like, let's go over to the Goliath, where we're straight on the top and we're coming up at an angle to meet it. Or, and you see there's a little bit of that going on on the, the grate here. This cattle egret is much more of a sort of symmetrical spear point. So the overall shape of your bill, is it more flat on the top, the bottom kind of coming up more? Um, or are you getting more of a spear tip? That's something that you're going to want, you're going to want to look at on, on the individual species that's in front of you. All right. And let's move down the body a little bit and take a look at that neck. So the neck of a heron or egret is really different than the neck of a um, of a sandhill crane, of, of a goose, of a swan, of an ostrich. There's something really special about heron and egret necks. And um, this is where <clears throat> our workshop gets just a little bit kinky. There's this cool little kink in the neck of the bird. And we're going to take a close look at that now. All right. Um, this is not a heron or egret. This is an anhinga. And if you look on the anhinga, the anhinga's neck comes down, and there is this cool little kink in it. This is a wonderful old drawing of the bones and the muscles inside the anhinga's neck. 
And what you're, you'll see is that there's, there are bones coming down. One, two, three, four, five, six. And the seventh one here, it's actually a different bone that is the, the long one here in the neck of the heron and ear. You're going down medium size, and then you get to this one that's a little bit longer. And there are tendons that go from the base. Oops, not you yet. Spoiler alert. Um, the, uh, from the base of the, um, the bone here up along the next one, these allow this top part to be pulled forward. And what that does is by having this cool kink in the neck, sort of this intentional drop back and swing around effect, you get the same sort of mechanics that go on if you are throwing a spear with an atlatl um, or using a trebuchet to launch a, a boulder into your opponent's castle. Um, on, in both of these, uh, you, this, this little kind of extra extension here, this initial kink, or in the trebuchet, what you see is that the, the throwing arm is down here, and then folded back this way is the, um, is, is the, the ball. So by having this extra part here, by having this extra part here, on the thrust with the, the atlatl, um, you can get a spear going at about 95 miles an hour. Um, so much faster than you would be able to with just throwing a spear with your hand regularly. So what this does is it gives, you've got this sort of atlatl structure built into the neck of the egret with that kink. So when you're drawing the kink, just sort of celebrate this wonderful adaptation that you're seeing. Um, this is a wonderful um, x-ray by uh, a, a visual artist, um, Ari Van Trait. I don't know if I'm pronouncing the name correctly, but um, uh, uh, Ari does these incredible nature x-rays. And in this, you can see, let's uh, annotate this. You can see here's the back of the skull and here's bone number one, right? two, three, right? And, oh, sorry, I think I need to move this. Actually, sorry, here's bone number one. Here's the back of the skull. I was thinking like, I'm missing a bone here. And there it was hiding right up there. So one, two, three, four. See, in these birds, it's number five that is really, really long. And if you look right here, you can see a tendon going back like that tendon and muscles. There's a little muscle right in there. Um, and so what you're seeing here at the back of the bird is its spine is going like this down here to a corner right there. So there's a corner in the spine and then the bones are coming forward. We're seeing a corner right here. The spine is now in the front. Here's the air pipe, the trachea with those little cartilage rings around it so it doesn't collapse, the esophagus behind it, that's what, where it swallows food, so trachea and esophagus, they cross over at this point and um, then go behind the spine. So what you're seeing here is there is a bony projection right here, a corner on the bird. And in front of that, we've got the curve made smooth by the trachea, now, in the front over here, we're now going to a bony corner here and the back made smooth by the trachea. So the pattern that I'm seeing is I'm coming down to a corner and then my neck is going across here. I'm getting another corner here in the front. So a corner here a corner here, a curve behind there, and a curve in front of it. So it's going to be curves and corners. So this means really interesting, interesting things um, for the, the structure of our bird. 
love this visual artist's work. Here's another x-ray of the head of a, of a heron. This one has its head extended more, but you can see on the back of the bird, I'm just going to draw in the skin here, you would have the back of the bird coming into a corner, and you'd have the front coming in to a corner. So this angle here, this angle here, this angle here are made by the bones sticking out of what you're seeing. So we're going to be looking for this, this curve and corners, curves and corners. So on the back, it's going to go corner to curve. On the front, it's going to go curve to corner. It's just when you start realizing the mechanics behind this, oh, let's throw in this little muscle right in here. All right, it just, it becomes so much fun. It's just so elegant, such a beautiful, beautiful structure. Now. Jack, there's a, a question that um, a couple of people have asked about the trachea. Does trying to wrap our, our minds around, so is the trachea going alongside? Yes, that? yes, great question. So the trachea and the esophagus, they're not going through the bone, they're going to one side of it. And um, the, and so what's neat is when, uh, also you think about this with the, the, the fish that it swallows, when, when this bird swallows a fish, um, you'll see that big fish starting to kind of come down and you'll see a big lump in the throat here and it will often kind of pause here for a little bit with that big lump in the middle of the throat as that fish is kind of passing down. The you hard part, why. why is that Carolyn? Because there's a spine crossing. That's right, this, this bone is crossing across here. You have to get that fish past that bone. So sometimes, um, you know, wiggle its head, sort of move around. Once it gets past this point, then shloop on down, right? But you'll see it kind of the fish come down, pause right in here as it's crossing over that bone. It's, isn't that neat? I, I, I just think that that's, that is, is just, that's just beautiful. And I don't know whether it passes on the right side or the left side of the, uh, of that bone. Um, it'd be uh, fun to know that. Now, let's take a look at how this looks on the outside. All right, so what I want you to notice on these birds here, right, is that on the back side here, I've got my curve, and here's my corner. On the front, here's my curve, and I'm going up to my corner here. Um, it's getting even more dramatic with this more bent head curve and a corner. And in the front, curve and corner. Notice there's a little bit of a turn here, a little bit of a turn here. Think of what's going on anatomically under the hood there to make that happen. I, 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 get, I get really excited about this. Um, now, um, how do I clear it? Oh, there we go. Now, these birds then, um, with this uh, kink in the neck, they, that they can bring the neck down or extend it up, as we just saw in that heron. And um, oh, these, by the way, uh, um, Emily uh, Willowbly is an amazing um, paleo artist. She does all these wonderful drawings of um, dinosaurs and things. You've got to check out her work. But these are some of her photographs showing changes in the shape of a little green heron. Did she draw those? Uh, no, those are, those are photographs. And so, but notice how you... Um, Notice this big bump on the front of the chest of this thing, right? 
and you don't find that big bump on the, on the extended head here. Now that you know what's going on, I want you to imagine this neck and what happens underneath the hood here. And can you envision what is happening with these bones? So in this one up here, if I've got a head up here, I've got a bone coming down like this. I'm then curving up here and coming, um, coming back down and in. Um, in here, I'm coming down over and back. And up here, I'm coming down, I'm coming over. See this little bump right here? There's a change in angle. When you really kind of, when you know this under the hood anatomy, things like this little change in angle, you'll see that you're like, oh look, there's a change in angle here. There's a corner here. I'm seeing a curve to straight right in there. All right, see there, your spine is coming back down there like that. So what we wanna do is be able to, to visualize what's happening under the hood. And that helps bring our attention to subtleties like those, let me get rid of all my purple lines, right? Now you're looking in here, right? You see like, oh, there's some, some little subtleties there that help me kind of carve this shape. So how do you then go about, here's just one more example of that, these sort of shape shifter birds. So here's how I go about drawing these things. There are these curves and angles, curves and angles. And so what I do is I get myself to really focus on the negative shapes in front of the neck and behind the neck. If I can look at those shapes here, the negative shapes meaning the shapes of these yellow areas that you see, that makes a huge difference in your being able to draw these. So I'm really gonna be leveraging those negative shapes. And here's how I go about doing it, All right? If this is, if this is my little head, Here's my head. So draw that on your piece of paper. I then am going to, whoop. All right, whoop, there we go. Um, I then am going to put in a little line for where the beak is. And in doing that, I wanna to try to pay attention to how long is that beak relative to that head? Now comes the negative shape. What I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the area in front of the neck of this bird as a set of straight kind of, whoops, sorry about that. Um, um, a set of, um, oh, here we go. I think that, I'm not sure why we're jumping back to this screen. We'll try this one more time. Here, stay. Okay. Um, so what you want to do is instead of, I often will think of this not a bunch as, as a bunch of little curves, but instead of little interconnecting straight lines. If I can catch some of those corners, that's, that's great. Initially, I'll be kind of carving this as little straights. And then you're thinking, oh, I see what you're doing. All right, you're just, you're focusing on the shape of the negative space in the front and getting the one right under the head is absolute gold, right? Um, but instead of then just putting in the back, I put in a few little spacer dots and what these are going to do is these are just going to help me when I'm drawing that neck. It's going to make, prevent me from making the neck too skinny. If I just focus on the negative shape at the front and the negative shape in the back, I can end up with a neck that's either too skinny or too thick. So here, I'm not creating points that are necessarily right on 
the line of my neck. So I'm, my next move is not to go dot to dot to dot. I'm not making a dot to dot drawing for myself. I'm just giving myself some spacers to prevent myself from making the neck too skinny. These are just reminders that generally speaking in this zone, your neck is about this thick. My line does not have to pass directly through those lines. So it's not, I'm not going dot to dot, right? Then I'm gonna look at the negative shape behind the head, right? And just do the same thing. And I'm gonna draw in those angles behind the head. Look for the angles and curves back there. And that negative shape that, you know, going around that back bump and then down over the hunch of the body, this ends up being a really beautiful negative shape right in there. And once I've got that, I can then draw my, draw over those lines more carefully. And this is the drawing that everybody sees. So this is sort of what I would be doing with my non-photo blue pencil. And then I can draw over that and I am getting, I'm getting a bird that looks much more birdy. Um, want to point out a couple of little details that I'm doing here that you might want to incorporate. Um, notice that here, as you come around the back here, as you go around this bump on the back, what I'm doing is I'm just making a few little lines that are thicker and thinner, kind of in like that. And same thing here, sort of thicker out here and carving in, thicker carving in. And what you kind of get is this, as you're going over this bump and this bump, those are, you're suggesting that the feathers here, because they're going over this hard bump, they're kind of sticking out a little bit more and you'll get a little bit more of the fluffy feel of them. So that's why you're gonna make, this is, so as that line kind of comes around, let's say there's, if I've got, got a, a, a thing of feathers and it goes over a surface, if I do that, it's just gonna feel like it's a hard plastic surface. But if my line comes around, right, and then, I do something like that, you kind of just sort of imagine that those feathers in that point are just kind of fluffing out a little bit more. So you're seeing that here, here, a little bit right down in there. I do the same thing when I'm drawing mammals, where you kind of come over a bump, you just kind of get, you can get a, a sense more of kind of looking into the shaggy of the feathers. But I'm not doing little shaggy marks all the way around the edges of the bird. Otherwise, it kind of looks like this like a porcupine. All right. We don't want that. A little bit of color and you're done. So notice with the color, I've just put in a little bit of shadow leaving, oh, no, come back. Nope, not you, not you. Ah. <clears throat> with my, um, with the, 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 the shadow, I'm leaving just a little bit of some highlight of white kind of coming in a little bit in there and there. So the shadow doesn't go all the way up against the edge. If you leave a little bit of reflected light zone in there, a little bit in there, that's gonna make that, um, it just sort of feel a little bit more rounded. So just a few little subtle shadows go a long way. So now you get to try this. All right, let's try this with this bird. Oh, look at those angles. Look at those angles. All right. So now instead of looking at my drawing, just sort of block this in. And this bird is going to be here for about two minutes. So we're going to have about two minutes to carve in these angles. Remember the negative shape trick. Remember the spacers. Notice how right in here you get a little sense of the kind of the fluffiness in those feathers. You see a little bit of these guys lifting off there.
uh, one more minute. <clears throat> if you haven't yet, really look at the gray area here as a negative shape. Look at that shape of that gray area there where you're not so much looking at the bird, you're looking past the bird at that shape there, this little shark fin behind it here. I know I'm not giving you time to finish it, but I hope that you've had a chance here to just to play with a few of those ideas. Again, the, the critical ideas are, I would, the way I would sort of frame this guy is I have that, I then have a negative shape. I'm seeing a curve to a straight, to an angle. Then you put in some spacers And then I want to notice sort of where this point is relative to this point, right? So those are kind of at kind of going across here. I've got a curve to a flat to a curve. And this is just a neat negative shape right in there. That's a neat, look at that little kind of shark fin thing. If I don't look at this as a negative shape, then what will happen is I might get this bird with a, um, neck that's really long, right? Um, because I'm not looking at this negative shape. But if I'm looking at that negative shape, I go like, oh, that, that is in there. That body's not down here, it's over here. So looking at that negative shape helps me place this material in the right place. Mm -hmm. um, so school doesn't start quite yet. Still got a few more minutes. <clears throat> oh, I like it. I like it but wait, there's more. Um, all right, so just on this bird, we're going to uh, not be drawing this one, but we just want you to take a close look at it, look at these angles, and think about how you do the same thing with this. Think of the negative shapes. See the corners. See the corners and see the curves. And then if you're also, you're, so you're seeing the corners and the curves and just keeping the general width of this thing and you're gonna have a heron neck. Let's jump over to the body for just a moment. Uh, when I look at the bird's body, there are um, there's, there's different sorts of things going on. First of all, here's my cool S-shaped neck. I've got my S-shaped neck plugging in here. But where does that neck really come into the body? And what on earth is going on here with the wing? If I've studied wings before, and you have, right? You know we have wings, there's primaries and secondaries, there's covert feathers. As I look at this section, I say like, oh, there's one section of wing here. Hmm. Um, it sort of sticks out of the bottom, then I've got this part that overlaps on top of it, then I've got a row of small feathers. So I might be tempted to think, well, maybe these are primary feathers, secondary feathers, and covert, coverts. But you know what? These are both coverts. These are secondaries. And you know how much of the primaries you're seeing here? You're seeing just a little bitty thing sticking out here, and sometimes you don't see it at all, right? So. Uh, but but in order but don't take my word from it believe the bird i was surfing around on the internet the other night and i found this wonderful video that i want to share with you folks um of a bird an, um coming down for a landing and we want to watch um what it does with its um, we want to see what happens with this wing. So watch this. This is going to be crazy. Um, so I'm going to go over, I'm going to share this. Let's go right here. 
Uh, there it is. Media could not be loaded either because the server or network failed or because the format is not supported. Uh, never mind. You didn't want to see that. Try reloading the page. Oh, okay. it's on a website. Oh, saved by Melinda. Ladies and gentlemen, Melinda Nakagawa, give her a hand. Thank you, Melinda. You got my back. All right. So what was cool about this is that, um, so this is, I found it on, on Flickr um, and uh, whoever, uh, Tara Tan, Tanaka, um, she uh, made this awesome video and you can slow it down. And what we're seeing is, first of all, what is this egret going to do with its wings when it lands? All right, so here it comes. We'll first just watch it without me slowing it down and watch what happens. Lands, oh, a little cupped and whoa, whoa. And scene. All right, was that beautiful? Let's look at that again. All right, so it's coming down. And then we're going to slow it down. Wings are kind of cupped. Watch what the primaries do. And where'd they go? What? Oh, that was crazy. Okay. So now, here's what we get to do. We get to, with this, is, wait, hold on. Nope, nope. All right. So here I am. I'm bringing it along, and it is coming down. And... I want to kind of get to, now here's, here's where we start to pay attention. All right, now your primary feathers, oh no, wait, wait first stop. Come on back here. All right, um, so the primary feathers are this part, oh no, wait, no, Bert, stop that. I can't touch the screen with my little tablet here. So the primary feathers are this sort of fanned part out here. You see them kind of hanging out right down here. So they're right now kind of cupped forward and here you see them being pulled back and you notice that so the primary feathers oh no not that much forward come back here just like that stay there we go all right so this part right here that's the primaries these are secondary feathers here these are primary feathers and watch what happens we're going to see these feathers get tucked towards you over and folded up underneath the secondary feathers. So here you still see them, but watch as this comes forward. All right, there you still see the secondary, the primaries. Wing is up, All right? They're tucking in, and here comes the corner of the secondaries down on top. See them, 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 them hiding under there, All right? You get that? So there they are again. There, oh, see, there they are. There, there, there they are. Right there are the primary feathers about to be covered up completely by the secondary feathers and the coverts. Oh, isn't that neat? So you're not seeing those primaries at all. When you're looking at the bird's wing, you're seeing the big block of secondaries and secondary coverts. And also in this case, this little extra thumb that is sticking out, that's the bird's allula, right? That's the, bird, the feathers that are attached to its thumb. So those big primary feathers that we're used to drawing that are an important part of the structure of a wing, we're not seeing at all. Just a big block of secondary feathers. Oh my goodness. That is just too cool. Uh, I'm going to stop sharing that and we are going to go back to um, this right here. All right. <clears throat> so let's, oh, here we go. And girls, it is time for class to start. So let's head on back. If you have any trouble um, logging in, you come and tell me. All right. Let's see if you can do it yourself. Okay. I love you both. And thank you for joining me for the first part of the workshop. And I'll catch you up on what you missed later. Yep. We're, we're, we're trying to manage school from home and, and, uh, and uh, it's, uh, it's, it's fun.
All right, but but here we are back with with the body, back with the body. Um, I want uh, Melinda. What page are you seeing right now? I'm seeing the body slide with the the heron and the um, blue. Okay, and it just got bigger. Yep, it got bigger. All right, so I'm seeing the same thing as you. Um, all right, so this is an X-ray of of an uh, of a heron and what you're seeing here is the neck coming down this is the side view and the neck comes down curves up and it actually inserts oh no come back ah uh, inserts up on the the top part of the the spine so it's going up kind of tucks back you, you expect it to kind of come down and be inserting in here it actually is goes flat along the top of the back here and tucks in to the spine right in there. The hips start back to here, so it has a knee that is high in the body. This thigh is covered in the feathers. You never get to see it. You never get to see most of its tibia um, that is this big long bone here. This is its ankle out here. Also, it's kind of fun. In this x-ray, you can see that it has an egg. This was a bird that was um, found injured and, and sick in, in a lagoon. And, um, and nature lovers got out there. It's dangerous to catch a, a heron because of that big beak can um, really inflict a lot of damage to other people. But they, they caught it, they got it under an x-ray and they discovered that it's got an egg, but also you can see where somebody had shot it. So this is buckshot that is lodged in the body of this bird, but they rehabilitated this bird and were able to release it. Um, and just sort of a, want to send a shout out to people working at wildlife rehabilitation and rescue centers. We really appreciate the work that you do. And this great blue heron uh, does as well. Um, and sort of it's a good reminder of both humans can behave badly and humans can do beautiful things that help take care of the world around us. It's a choice. It's a choice that we all have. And how are we going to act in the face of that? Um, here's another um, different bird. But you can see that spine coming in high here along the back. Here is the point of the hip to the knee. Here's the drumstick of the bird. All right, so you never get to really see, imagine this whole part would be covered up with feathers. You would never be really seeing that part of the bird. Right? And um, you just see part of uh, this part of the, the, the bird's leg sticking down, sometimes a little bit of this feather covered upper thigh. Um, back to uh, area, uh, von Trait. Um, this is a beautiful picture here. You can imagine this with, let's annotate this and just put a little bit of feathers on top of it and we'll see what, what, we, would, uh, what we would have here. Right. So if there were feathers on this, you would have a curve coming down here, curve coming down here to an angle, and that then coming back to the body here, uh, coming around this angle here to the, the body. You would have in here your, um, the, the mass of your body and feathers. Right, so this bird's feathery shag would kind of come up and hide this area. Here's where its tail would attach. So you have a little stub of a tail sticking out. Um, this bird's um, wrist is kind of lower on its body. So its wings are sticking out further here. Now if those wrist was brought up higher in here, the wings would then occupy this area right in here. This bird's wrist is down lower, so it's, you'd then have kind of wing zone sticking out like that. On the bottom, you'd have a little bit of fluff sticking out, and then you'd see this part of the leg to the joint, 
to there. So this joint here, hip, knee, that's the bird's heel. That joint partway up the body, you're looking at the heel of the bird. So that's a little bit of what's happening under the hood. So let's take a look at this bird's wing. All right, I've got this big wing. Oops, no, come on back. My big wing here. Um, and what all I'm seeing of the primaries is if you look here, a few of these little vertical line, horizontal lines right here, or not horizontal lines, but parallel lines right through there. This is all, um, this, so I've got secondaries, I've got secondary coverts coming around here, and then these are median, uh, these are greater median and lesser coverts. These are these scratchy things here. Those are my back feathers, my um, scapular feathers, fluffing down over the top part of my wing. On this bird here, what I'm seeing for wing is here, here are my scapular feathers, right, my back feathers. Right? There are, there is a mass of covert feathers in here and somewhere, maybe in here, maybe in here, they're sort of getting smaller. When I can't see details, I don't put them in. This bird has out here, these are secondary feathers that are sticking out below the coverts, and its primaries would be tucked up underneath them. Here, I think what we're looking at is a side view of these would be tail feathers sticking out. So I'm going to delete those so you can see that. Um, when it's hard to see the edges of feathers, what I recommend that you do is you just draw in something that kind of suggests that I see a little bit of a line here, a little bit of a line here, maybe a little bit of a line here. And I probably wouldn't be doing very much more than that on the wing. If you get in there and you sort of say, well, it should be, um, I should be able to see greater coverts and median coverts and lesser coverts, and, and I'm gonna have um, secondary feathers in here. You start drawing in all this detail that you think should be there, but you don't really have a good reference to, and it doesn't look like the bird that you are actually looking at. So um, this is a great example of if, if you can't see it, don't show it. Um, and suggesting a little bit of that detail with a few well-placed lines, Right, so I might have something here. I might have a little suggestion of some feathers coming across here on the chest, a little bit of some scapulars up in here. Maybe a little kind of hint that there's something, kind of a little break in there. Would be a good way to do it. Let's jump over for a moment and take a little bit of a closer look at the head of um, oh, a strange, uh, All right, um, let's take a little bit of a closer look at, at the head of one of these birds. Um, and the, 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 the reason is that um, this is, there's, there's a lot of details that you'll see on the head of this great blue heron that you're going to see on lots of, of, of other birds. So, um, or, or lots of other um, herons and, and, and egrets. Um, and so this, 
wonderful photograph that I got from birdpixel.com. Um, if I were to have kind of my non-photo blue pencil out, and I were to block in what I'm seeing with this head, um, I would I would probably do something along this line. Nope, not along that line. There we go. All right, I would say that I have a ball of a head and a beak and kind of get that straight spear of the thing. So in, in my um, non-photo blue pencil sort of preliminary drawing, I might not have anything more than this. Um, perhaps it'd be really useful for me to kind of, I am sort of blocking out where the edge of the head is here with this, but uh, let me just kind of hide the bird here for a second. Um, so you see that with a non-photo blue pencil, I'm really not blocking in any significant detail. And I do that really lightly so that um, when I start to draw on top of that with graphite, um, it so there's my bird. Maybe want to make that a little bit bolder, All right? So that would be kind of initial preliminary drawing. Now what I would do is I would start to draw um, on. I would start to do my drawing on top of this, and. What I'm going to do here is sometimes a good kind of landmark is just kind of going down the suture of that that mouth, right? I'm a, from a slight little kind of downturn, and I don't have to take that line all the way out to the tip of the bill. You notice that there's kind of clear suture here, clear suture here, less distinct right in there. So if I draw that black line all the way to the tip of the bill, sometimes it looks a little bit more cartoonish. Then. I'm going to block in the top part of the bill. I want that to kind of come, I've got too much of an arch in that, so I want that to be a little bit straighter. Not that straight. That'll do. I'm looking at the thickness of the bill and putting in lower bill. And somewhere about in here, it's gonna to start to turn up more. So it's gonna come out pretty straight and then there's gonna be a little bit more of an, of an upturned effect out there. My eye, I'm going to, I'm gonna put that eye Notice it's, it's in line with the middle of this upper mandible. So the eye is gonna be placed roughly in here. And I'm gonna make a line that's a bit heavier towards the back here and kind of heavier towards this front corner. And that can suggest those little kind of corners of the eye a little bit. I'm going to make my bird look a little bit sleepy, putting some lines and ridges around the eye, sort of some, that makes your bird look like it's been up a little bit too late. That does a lot to make your bird sort of feel much more alive. Now, um, I want to think about the ways that the feathers are going to interact on the, the head of this bird. Um, 
So actually, I'm gonna just make these here a little bit. Older. Now, so the feathers, look here, the full feather is going to wrap around this eye and they're going to come out here onto the forehead of the bird, right? And out over all the way to here. And the feathers that are out there are little tiny feathers. So I can kind of suggest that there's just some little kind of bristly feathers. And then the feathers become bigger and overlap a little bit more. But I can kind of get, give you a sort of a sense of the kind of going out to some, just to those little bristly feathers out there. Look at this cool under the eye turn. So the, the feathers kind of Droop, uh, droop down there. And so I'm going to get that little kind of gap there. And then the feathers come all the way up into this area here. Now this bird here has lost a bunch of feathers. Um, sometimes you can actually find feathers all the way up into this area here on the lower bill. And um, so you get this, this effect of coming down like that so that you see the the feathers stick out further on the lower bill. And the final little piece here, or not, not the final little piece, but one of our closer to final pieces, is these feathers coming up underneath the chin here. Those rock out fairly far onto the bill itself, right there on the underside of the bill. So I'm going to kind of suggest that some of those are kind of rough and feathery. There's another interesting feature we can see on the side of the head of this thing. This bird actually has an ear patch called an, or an auricular that hangs out in this part of its head. There's actually a patch of kind of light white kind of fluffy uh, kind of more stiffly bristled feathers that is in right. You can see some of the back edges of those right there. That's part of the bird's auriculars. And those are um, a patch of feathers that have, they've got more of a um, They've got more, uh, they don't have uh, really soft edges to them so that the, 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 the feathers on the, um, they don't attenuate sound that comes through the, the head as much. And our kind of patch on the top of the head is gonna wrap down around there. Um, so quick and dirty, my bird head um, I don't like that tip of my bill shape, but let's not get wrapped around the axle about that is I'm going to have the eye again sighting right down the top part. Below that eye, I'm going to kind of squizzle this down a little bit. And then the, the skin wraps around here and onto the forehead of the bird. On the lower mandible, what you're going to do is you're going to fluff those feathers out further than they did here. So, it's, right? So, uh, these feathers actually could come all the way down here. All right? So, I'm going to get um, these feathers on the lower mandible come out further. And then you have the feathers that come out along the bottom edge of the bill. Now, 
then you need a little bit of the bottom of your head, and then you can start to come down, hit your corners. Herons and egrets, or uh, herons will often have those cool things like that. So those are a few ideas and strategies that you can use to help you draw herons and egrets. Um, and um, the, 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 the best thing that you can do with this is to initially just get some photo reference. If, if there's a marsh with egrets in it, go out to the marsh with egrets in it. All right. But if there's, if there's not immediately uh, accessible to you, then that's okay. Just head over um, to your computer, get some photographs um, or videos of herons and egrets, look at their necks moving around, and, and play with some drawings of what you see. And the more you mess around with it, the more you play with it, the, the, the more comfortable you're going to get with it. And then you're going to sort of get this sense of like, oh, I really understand and I'm looking for and I'm expecting to see kinks in the neck that are there in a place that makes sense to me. And you get that neck, it's going to look like a heron, right? Then you add that kind of that intense face with the feathers coming out at different locations on the bottom of the face, right? It's, it's, it's going to work. And if you're drawing an egret, you don't have to color it in. So um, you can have a lot of fun with these birds. They're, they're so beautiful to draw. The only danger here is then the next time you're drawing a sandhill crane or you're drawing a goose is that you'll put a heron neck on it and they don't have that. Um, so as long as you know that and you're not going to accidentally uh, jack a, a heron neck into your sandhill crane, um, you'll you'll be doing just fine. But even if that ha does happen, you know, bless your heart, you know, you're way ahead of the curve. Everybody else, what they're doing is they're putting sandhill crane necks onto their herons or swan necks, you know, the big, big tube um, onto their onto their herons. And and then they're missing the whole the whole adaladal thing. And um, it's just so much fun to, to see that. So I hope this was some useful strategies to you. And they're gonna help your drawings of herons and egrets the next time at your marsh, you're down at the marsh because you've practiced these, they'll be right there at your fingertips. So what I need you to do is give me six herons or egrets. One, two, three, four, five, six, all right? Um, six herons and egrets in the different extensions of the neck. You might try some different species, different species so that you um, can get a sense for some of the different changes in, in the proportions of those beaks. But one, two, three, four, five, six herons and egrets. Um, share them on the Nature Journal Club Facebook page. Um, and um, thank you so much for joining us today.